size and in terms of your involvement and why you chose to participate? Um, well, for me, you know, when Steven said, hey, you want to go to Orlando and uh, just be a benefit, man. And uh, you know where we're going. Support families and friends of the victims of this horrific act. And um, no, just talking to someone else today, asked me the same question. I, I, you, you, my instinct is just to go, right? It's, it's a wonderful thing to do, and you just do that. You just go and support. But then when someone asked me, I, was, I really thought about it, and I guess in our culture right now, there's so much polarization, and there's so many different sides. And this is really the American spirit to me, right? The support, the love, the charity, the giving. Um, and I wanted to be part of that. So you shouldn't really applaud us. You should applaud the person next to you because you guys deserve all the credit. Thank you, Orlando. You guys, that'd be great. I I'm here because of you. You know, I've known James for a, for a little while now, and uh, you called me, you know, after what happened a couple of months ago at Pulse Nightclub, and um, just said, we're, we're doing an event in Orlando. I think it's in September. And I went, uh, how, one day? It, you're like, yeah, one day. I'm like, all right, I'm in. And, uh, you know, that was, that was just an easy decision for me, but boy, the memories that I'll take from today, I don't think I've ever hugged so many people as I did at a convention today. You know, uh, a lot of hugs and, um, you know, a very common refrain when, when I meet people, meet friends, meet fans, you know, at something like this, is people will say, thank you for doing this. And today, a much more common refrain was, thank you for doing this for us. This is clearly a community that went through something and Anything that we can do, big, small, fun, interesting, weird, is uh, we're happy to do it. As a friend of mine said when I told her to come back and do this, you know, thank you for doing it, but it's time to have fun again, live a little again, and that's what this is. I mean, this is for all the kind of this nerd culture and this, you know, this fans of The Walking Dead and The Bear or Flash and all these other shows. So it's great to kind of get back to some normal and think, but do it in a way that we're honoring and giving back to the community. So you all should give yourselves a round of applause as well. Thank you all so much. And in saying that, so let's get into some of the fun stuff. We're going to jump right into some of the questions. Hi, my question is uh, simply, would you guys support to help people? Because that's what we're here to do today. So what are the charities or organizations that you guys personally support to help them? Are you talking about for the Orlando benefit, or are you talking about just It can be for general? both. It can be for Orlando. Well, I mean, of course, for for the for the Orlando benefit this weekend, it, it, it's going to the One Orlando Fund, which is established by the city. So everything that the actors are making, and autographs and photo ops are going back, and everything above the cost of putting on this weekend is going to them as well. Um, and then not only is it, is it our company and these actors giving up, but it's also the volunteers giving their time this weekend. Uh, a lot of them coming in from throughout the country that come to our events everywhere else. Uh, it's companies like Showflix and Groupon that put our tickets where they're giving all their profits back as well. It's, uh, you know, our badge company. It's the EMS guys here today donating their time for free today. Uh, it's the Orange County Convention Center where normally this venue for the day is around like 40, 50, 60 grand. And it was like 12 grand, I think, is what we put down. So everybody is just, they're pitching in where they can. So it's a lot of people beyond just the ones that you see here today giving back. And then I, 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 I don't know about David, but I know with, with Stephen, I mean, I've watched him just give and give and give to so many people, and, and it's just something truly special about it. Yeah, I'm, kids, cover your ears. <laughs> I'm, I'm gearing up for another fuck answer campaign really soon. <laughs> or don't. <laughs> Will the spurt of vigilantes this season in kind of more gritty tone affect both of your characters? Oliver loves the grit. <laughs> Oliver loves the grit. Teacher Oliver is not, uh, Oliver's not known for his patience, or understanding, or an impulse to listen to others. Or intelligence. What? what? 
Well, all of those things that I just said lead to unintelligent decisions. But, uh, no, I like the new recruits that we have on the team. We, we refer to them as the recruits. And, um, you know, ironically, with everything that's going on in Star City right now, there are a lot of instances where it seems like Oliver is the optimistic one. If I see a really big change in a character for my character, it would be that. I mean, for David, it seems like it seems like you've taken my surly position. <laughs> yeah, Diggle's a little surly this season. I mean, he's still recovering from, uh, obviously, um, the events that happened with his brother, and clearly the Black Canary, two uh, tragic events that he, he bears the responsibility of. Um, so he's, he's coming back to the team. You find him in Chechnya at the beginning of the season. He's, he's away from the team. And uh, he comes back to the team and he has some very pointed things to say about the new recruits. So um, that, uh, the, the whole new dynamic of the team affects Diggle in a very personal way. And before I go, um, I know I shouldn't speak it already, but I just want to show um, David and I have our new friend. David and James, to you guys, from John, a very heartfelt apology, and I'm sure he'll make it up to you in so many different inappropriate ways that you'll forget all about. 
How do I feel about Malcolm Merlin? At the end of the year last year, after all the events that have transpired between uh, Oliver and Malcolm, I was actually saying to the producers, you guys can't even have them in the same room. Because Oliver would just kill him at this point, point blank. And, and that's something that is a real hurdle for us to deal with on the show, because Malcolm has crossed every conceivable line with Oliver, and there's no turning back now, at least for my character. So I don't know how we're going to overcome that hurdle, because I think that the interaction between Oliver and Malcolm is an important and interesting part of the show. I don't know how we're going to manage it. I'm sure they'll figure it out. What do you think are the changes, like how many changes do you think we're going to see throughout not only your guys' characters, but all characters in this upcoming season, now that there's so many new ones coming in? Uh, well, I mean, the theme of the, of the season is legacy, right? So um, you're going to see a lot of different people making their part. Um, and that includes the new recruits. They, they are strong-willed, and, um, and they will affect and change the dynamic of, of the three core characters, Felicity, Oliver, and Dick. So um, what they bring to the show um, really affects the whole tone. So um, I don't know, I think, I think this is kind of a different, that's one side of it where you're going to kind of see a different type of energy in the show. And I think the other part is just what we've talked about kind of since the beginning of the season, which is the show is kind of getting back to kind of a, a ground roots, you know, street fighting type of uh, feel, kind of yep. away from the magic and supernatural things that kind of were a wonderful part of the previous seasons. But um, I think it's kind of getting back to some of the things that makes, makes this show so great, which is really kind of a gritty, kind of uh, earthy, down-to-earth show. It's something that I really hope that we lean into, and we're beginning to. Uh, we are. We're focusing a lot on, you know, the establishment of of, uh, of new characters. I was actually speaking with Greg Berlanti and, um, yesterday. He was talking about, you know, one of the shows that he really admired uh, as a viewer was House. And, I mean, I, I like that show a lot, too. And after three, four seasons, they basically brought in a new team. They kept people from the previous team, and they were still integral to the story, but it really gave it a, an injection of new blood, because you never know when you're going to strike lightning in a bottle with a character, and it's going to breathe new life into a show, which is, which is something that is necessary when you get to episode 99, episode 100. So uh, I'm excited for that, but I'm hoping that we really lean into the idea of Oliver being mayor, and and the political aspects that that can come with that, because you know some of the canon of Green Arrow really defines him as a, a liberal superhero. Now that meant something a little different in the 1940s than it does now uh, with politics in our our current day. Um, <laughs> holy shit. Um, <laughs> I'm Canadian, I can say that. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I'm hoping that that's something that we get into as well. I think we will. Thank you. Thank you. My question is, with all of the Flash Paradox coming along, how much is that going to affect their universe? And is any of that going to lead Nightwing coming into the season? Why don't we just give away who the big bad is and tell you how it ends and <laughs> uh, wrap up the flashbacks for okay. you. And, <laughs> Great. Uh, Flashpoint does affect us. Yeah. It and does. To, and to that I would say, in the early part of the season, a, a, a little goes a long way. Okay. Thank you. Wow, Thank you guys. Thank you, everybody.